program based on the value and the importance of it, the auditors suggested that we bring a more focused approach on it. This recommendation was accepted and implemented with effect from August 2021 with the formation of the ICT Risk Committee, which reports into the Enterprise Risk Management Committee. The policies and procedures that were being developed by the ICT Risk Committee feeds into the enterprise risk management because we have to take a holistic approach to risk. The agency is also considering the adoption of ISO 31000 risk management framework, which will assist the agency to be even more vigilant and support a more robust program that will ensure that not just the ICT, but all aspects of the agency risk are fully managed. What this means, member, is that the risks are properly managed and that if there are any specific risks, the ICT Risk Committee will raise it and then we now address it, whether it needs resources, budgetary or human or technological to ensure that that risk is mitigated. So, Mr. Chairman. So you're saying, Mr. Winter, that since you have accepted the recommendation from the AG Department, Auditor General Department, that you have implemented and you have seen positive changes? That's correct, Member. Member Charles. Good morning, everyone. Um, Mr. Winter, so I see also where further assessments were conducted by MOCA. Um, have you received the assessment report from them? We have received a report and it's currently now being reviewed by the agency and we're examining all the findings to ensure this report is also to support any other gaps. As PICA has a number of databases and it's important that we protect the identities of everyone. So MOCA support, the Auditor General support have all been taken on board by the agency to ensure that we provide a very robust framework and system to ensure the protection of the identity of persons and the systems for the agency. Mr. Winter, I have two questions on the first finding. What protection mechanisms are in place when you employ third-party contractors to undertake ICT work within PICA? And who would develop the security considerations for those third parties when they actually undertake the work? Mr. Chairman, any third party coming into the agency to work on our ICT systems, they, they are brought in on a contract basis, and in that contract there is non-disclosure, a non-disclosure agreement which they have to sign. Also, they are working, up, they operate in a specific area with specific access points, so they don't have general access to any and every area of the agency and its operations. So the, what I would call the sensitive information would be, there would be some kind of firewall that would prevent a third party from having any access. ...by the ICT steering committee, which the Auditor General recommended that should also be in place that would bring greater governance and direction to the implementation of our ICT investments and whatever programs and policies we are putting in. On the question of the ICT Risk Committee, we did put it in. The terms of reference have been developed now, but as we said prior to that, the ICT risks were being managed through the agency's Enterprise Risk Management Program. They were part of the risk register and the risk policy. However, Taking into consideration what the Auditor General has suggested, we are now focusing, we have an ICT risk committee. Those TOR have been developed, and it, <clears throat> we have had three meetings of the risk committee, and all the concerns or any issues are certainly now being addressed by the agency. So, Winter, could I ask particularly for the information security office and other personnel who work within the ICT structure, 
beyond the normal recruitment that you would do for persons coming into PICA, are those persons subject to um, either background checks or any other type of um, scrutiny before they are employed? Yes, Mr. Chairman. They are, they actually, we have to go, criminal records check from the police. We check their references and we actually do an in-depth social inquiry on these persons before they're employed to the agency. Thank you. Members, any other questions? That's... I don't have any further question, Chair, because I, having gone through the report and I've seen the management responses, I've seen the update from the Auditor General's Department, I am satisfied that PICA has done what was asked of them from the audit, and so I am at a place where I'm okay. So I have not have any further questions. Okay, Member, Member Clark has some, an additional question. Likewise, Mr. Chairman, I realize that PICA is, as would say in our world, a very obedient child, that they would have accepted their weaknesses found by the Auditor General, and they have done well in making speed to correct same. And so we just have to continue to work with them as best as possible to see the betterment of the future of our borders that they govern, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Member Wilson. I concur with my colleagues, and uh, I just wanted to add that um, in this technological world, it's quite dynamic, and as, as time goes on, we would have to consistently review and look at our processes and assess our risk, because risks change daily, probably even hourly. And um, I would see that PICA is, from what I, I garner so far, has been capturing and managing the risk, and they are, despite their framework, you know, by the AG was we needed a more comprehensive um, steering committee for ICT. I think that, um, in my view, you guys have been doing tremendously well, and um, the fact that there hasn't been any breaches is a testimony to, to what you guys have been doing so far, and I'm hoped, hoping that in the future it, it remains that way. But thank you, Chair. Member Miller. Thank you, sir, Chair. I want to concur as well with my colleagues. You know, I read the report. And I want to commend the management of PICO for the work that they have been doing and also implementing what AG found and also, you know, going forward if we could have some, you said that the, the online passport will be coming on stream this year. That is good news. So maybe pretty soon we can just walk through the airport with <laughs> scanning our faces without going to the, the immigration and stamping our books but everything will be technologically inclined. That is good news. I hope that will happen in short order. Mr. Winter, you want to give us an update on that since the member was prodding you in that direction? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, sir, the agency has, will be implementing a number of technological improvements to our border security and our border processing to enhance travel facilitation for all passengers. We will be adding some additional chaos to the Norman Manley Airport and upgrading them. We will also be adding electronic gates for the ease and processing of passengers. We have updated, so the passenger declaration form is now online, so you can complete that. We'll also be implementing e-passport by the end of the year and a customer relationship management system that will assist us to have a deeper and better appreciation of the understanding of our public and our customers so we can continue to improve and provide good service. In fact, I dare say, sir, I'd love to provide world-class service for the people of Jamaica. Thank you. Member Miller? I might add on that. Is it fair to say that once you have signed up the form online, there is no need to sign up the form coming in? Uh, that's correct, sir. And we are in discussion with our ministry to ensure that we have that blitz sorted out. 
Members, any other questions, comments for Pika, Madam AG? Any? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. And I too would like to commend Pico for the steps that they've taken. Um, it was my understanding that the audit was conducted in a quite a receptive atmosphere, and I think that assisted in addressing a number of the issues. There's just one matter that I want to clarify, Mr. Winter, and that is in relation to the, the risk committee. Just to emphasize that we didn't recommend a separate risk committee but that the risk must be monitored by the ICT steering committee. Um, I mean, it could be your decision to have a separate committee, but I'll just, just give you a proviso just to say to guard against um, restricting the participation. The ICT steering committees to have broad representation from all the units that utilize the ICT um, and your information asset. And so at the ICT steering committee, when you're assessing risk, you're to have input from all the users of the ICT, not just the technical persons. So that, that if you, if it, I don't know the constitution of the, I, the risk committee, but if it's too restricted, you could, you, what you will do is probably inhibit the flow of information from the everyday users within the various units. So that is something you can look back at, just to ensure that there's broad representation. The point has been noted, um, Auditor General, and it will be taken on board. All right, thank you very much, Pico. Um, from all indications, having accepted the findings, you have begun and done the implementation to improve the systems and their accountability and having gone through the report we believe you are on the right track so we continue to commend you to keep up the standards which from my own personal experience with Pika have been very good so thank you and can I have a motion for the well our next meeting is going to be next week Tuesday at 10 as we indicated before and I see Member Sibley is moving the motion and Member Wilson seconding it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I couldn't miss you. 